we are going to start with our first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. I hope you're interesting to know it. So let's go ahead. Okay, first, uh, so this we talk about the subjects of Bhagavad Gita. Now I will speak about what is Bhagavad Gita, when it was spoken, in what situation it was spoken, what was seen. So Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Lord Krishna to Arjuna 5,000 years before. And you're seeing behind me the whole scene of battlefield, right? The chariot of Lord Krishna and Arjuna is going and behind all the senas are there. So suppose the whole military is standing, right? India and Pakistan. Just think. An Indian soldier goes, Indian uh, commander, general, general commander of India goes, and you see the on the other side the general commander is his relative, is his chacha only, uncle. And then he feels, how can I fight? And he thinks I cannot fight. And then another commander comes and explains, Are Baba fight? So same situation is happening of Arjuna. There are lakhs of soldiers on both sides, 18 Akshuni Senas. So some 20 to 4, 24 lakh soldiers on the side of Kauravas, some 15 lakh soldiers on the side of Pandavas. Like what is the strength of army of India and China, something like that. And Arjuna comes, sees, and then he feels, I can't fight. And that's the time Bhagavad Gita comes out. And the whole first chapter is about setting the scene. How did both the armies are standing and what both of them did and Arjuna got confused. Okay, should I fight? Should I not fight? And the fight was already conscious have been born. Conscious have been blown and the fight to start at that moment, you know, Arjuna is thinking, should I fight or not fight? So just think about that predicament which was there in the mind of Arjuna. And that's the time Bhagavad Gita was spoken. So can you think the stress level Arjuna was having and then Bhagavad Gita was spoken? We can never have that much stress level in our life. Kya karna hai? So therefore, the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita is meant for normal people. It's not for people who renounce. Arjuna was a grasta, he was a married person, he was a warrior. And in the mid of battlefield, this Bhagavad Gita is spoken. So even while we are in our life, working in our life, there will be confusions, problems. But this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita can help us to find a real way of happiness. See, whatever we do in life, we think for happiness. You come for college, right? So that I will have a good career and be happy in life. You sit for a good job, that I will get a 10 lakh a package, 20 lakh a package, I will be happy. People get married, looking for, I will be happy. Then people have children, looking for, I will be happy. But somehow, this happiness does not, people are not able to taste it. People are not able to get it. But Bhagavad Gita tells us the right way to get happiness in our life. And during the sessions, we are going to learn many life lessons, right? What we can apply in our life. So I hope all of you are with me to learn the sessions. Here, so, so here we begin of the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So define and demonic. So here is so this is an overview of the chapter. So first we talk about first left one to eleven divine versus demonic setting the scene. So what is happening? Then signs of victory on the side of Arjuna. So because victory always on the God side. So what were the signs visible that we can assure? Yes, it was victory on Lord's side. Then Lord's love for his devotee. Arjuna, 21 to 27. And how Arjuna was confused and we also have confusions in our life, how to deal with them. So let's recite after me. Dhetrashta Upacha Dharam Shetre Guru Shetre Samveta Yusavaha Mamaka Pandavasheva 
kim kurvata sanjaya yeah so what so this so this was the first verse of bhagavad gita bhagavad gita has total 700 shlokas and this is the first and 18 chapters and this is the first verse spoken this rasha is saying in dharam shetra so kuru shetra was a dharam shetra was a holy place because Pashuram had done yajna there so that's why it was called dharam shetra kuru shetra samveta use sava what they samveta use sava they have all come together in the Kuru Shetra. Mamaka Pandava Sheva. Mere or Pandav ke putro ne Kim Kurva Sanjay. What they did? My, mere son. So, so here the Trasha is making a distinction. My son and sons of Pandu. And the Trasha had a fear in his mind because Kuru Shetra is a holy place. And Pandavas are on the side of Dharma. And holy place of Kurushetra will influence the Pandavas. So he was worried. And Dhritarashtra had a blind attachment to his son Duryodhana. So he was partial to the Pandavas, right? Partial to Duryodhana. So Duryodhana will say, if you don't do this, I will commit suicide. And Dhritarashtra will bend down. And because of that, Unfairly, he sent Pandavas for 12 years of exile. And even after Pandavas came, they were not ready to give them even an inch. Duryodhana told that I will not give even an inch of land to the Pandavas. And then Duryodhana told this that I will not give an inch of land to the Pandavas. So that time, is the Pandavas were so much badly treated in the war. Their wife was completely molested. It was like a parliament there. Still, they did not fight at that point of time. Still, they fight. But to establish dharma, they had to fight. If they would not have given a good treatment, many people ask why the Kurusheta war happened. If they would not have fought with the Durudana, whole world, whole state, or whole country of Bharat, that time would have become like an assembly of Gurus, where women are disrespected, they are disrobed, and therefore to give a lesson to Duryodhana was important. <clears throat> so what lessons we learn? Excessive attachment. Whenever we have attachment to something, it will lead to fear. So again, see, just like you see a honey bee, the bee can make a hole in the tree, but Bumblebee can make a hole in the tree, but when it drinks the nectar of the lotus and the lotus closes, it cannot make a hole in the lotus. Why? Because it has attached to that honey. It is there. So excessive attachment leads to fear. And because of the attachment, though the Trashta was a king, he became powerless. So by our own detachment in the heart, and doing our responsibilities with, with responsibility, doing our duty with responsibility and detachment in the heart, we can be very strong while doing anything we are doing. And if we give troubles to others, that trouble will come back to us also. Now, diplomacy of Duryodhana. So Duryodhana, he was a commander in chief of the Karvas. He was a king. And everybody was fighting on his behalf. So how to cheer up the team? So very amazingly, until then he says, he goes to Dronacharya and says, Oh, my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Draupad. So why saying Draupad? Because the Dronacharya knew that Draupad is the, uh, Draupad's son <coughs> is born to kill him. Still he gave the education to the son of Dapa. So he is pointing out that fault. And then he is measuring. Now, our strength is immeasurable, perfectly protected by Bhishma. Whereas Bhima is nothing in comparison to Bhishma. And then he says, Oh, others may feel offended because I glorified Bhishma. So then he is saying, Oh, all of you now must give full support to grandfather Bhishma as you stand at your respective strategic position of entrance into the phalanx of the army. So you all support, you also have a role. So he's always in a mood of manipulating others. 
and that's what we learn diplomacy versus character so duryodhana was very good at strategy making diplomacy good at manipulating his general and his motive was to exploit the pandavas where is yudhishthir yudhishthir his was a person of character even before he began the battle he sent a arrow taking blessing of bhishma and dronacharya and they both gave blessing vijaya bhava there so always he chose a side of dharma and finally who prevailed the dharma the motive of durudhana for the fight was envy towards the pandavas so exploit the pandavas let them extend i don't want them the motive for yudhishthir was fighting for god's word seen time of yours demons used to live separately demigods used to live separately right during the time of dwapar time of mahabharat both came on the same planet and they were fight so it was actually fight between the devatas and the asuras the fight between demonic kings and the divine kings now in kaluga what has happened both demon demonic nature and both divine nature are within us you see this person negativity bad vibes so it's up to us do we feed our divine nature or do we feed our demonic nature so is our own choice that what we want to nurture in our life just think about okay i'll give it just uh, exercise for you for 20 seconds just think about that what brings you divine nature and what brings and bad things in you negativity in heart just think about 20 seconds and just come back okay so after thinking you thinking when you are in good association what will come define values will come association of good people right when you hear good classes then divine nature will come you think positive you connect to god and when you when you associate with negative people negative tendencies will come out think negatively or watch movies which talk about demonic tendencies so what we associate that we become so if we nurture our good values like pandavas then our future is bright no matter whatever struggles we may be going in the life now sago so now everyone start blowing their conch shell and when krishna blowed his conch shell ಸಾಗೋಷೋದಾತ್ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ
Krishna. So this was the science of victory of the Pandavas. And then we see, see the beauty you see. Arjuna is fighting, sitting on the chariot and Krishna is taking the reins and becoming a chariot driver of his friend Arjuna. He is supreme lord. He is so great personality. He has shown the universal form, which we'll see in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. But he's taking such a simple position to serve his devotee Arjuna, to serve his friend Arjuna. So this is the introduction of Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. Sanjay Uvacha Eva Mukto Rishi Kesho Guda Keshina Bharataha Sena Yoro Bayo Mate Istha Pitwa Sanjay said, O oh, descendant of Bharat, having thus been addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna drew up the fine chariot in the midst of armies of both parties. So Krishna was drawing the chariot and he brought the chariot in between the two armies. So this is Krishna's Bhaktavasalita. Even when Arjuna took a shapat, Arjuna took the shapat that I, if I'm not able to kill Jadrat, I will die. And it was Krishna who covered the sun with his Sudarshan disk for his devotee Arjuna. So that means what? If we take shelter of God, if we first pray to God, if we become devotee of God, God is always there to help us in every difficult situation we are having. See, Bhagavad Gita doesn't say unless you do pray and don't do your work. What it says, by doing our work, you pray to God. So that's what Arjuna is doing. The Lord Krishna is sitting, but Arjuna is doing the whole work. But he is taking help of the Lord and Lord is there to help Arjuna. So this is the lesson we learn to face any life struggle in our life. You see, Krishna became a chariot driver for Arjuna. Lord is ready to serve his devotee. Krishna protected Arjuna throughout the battle of Kushetra and protected the vow of his devotee. In fact, in one of the time when both Duryodhana and Arjuna had went to Lord Krishna to ask for help for the battlefield, Lord Krishna said, I will help both of you. One side is me without any weapons. Other side is my Narayani Sena. You choose. And first he gave advice to Arjuna. Arjuna said, I want you without weapons. And Duryodhana was very happy because Arjuna is sentimental. And he took the <laughs> Krishna. But I am happy with the Narayani Sena. But finally, because Arjuna took Krishna, Arjuna was victorious. The so same way, when we choose God in our life, God we choose. So whatever problems we are facing, we are able to overcome slowly, slowly in our life. So God is always there for us. We just need to call him. Now after this, Arjuna, after seeing Bhishma and Drana and his family relatives, his mind got confused on the battlefield. And he was also feeling stress. So many times we feel stress. So what are the symptoms of stress which Arjuna was feeling? Limbs were quivering, mouth was drying up, whole body traveling, head standing on end, and hands, Gandiva both sleeping, skin burning, legs unable to stand. And he says, due to weakness of heart, I'm forgetting myself, mind feeling, and sees only causes of misfortune, only negativity is seen. And just think about the qualification of Arjuna. He was a great archer, learned in Shastras, great lineage, beauty, kingly position, so much qualification, but he's having a stress. So no matter who we are, problems come in our life. And problem came in Arjuna's life, but his all these qualifications could not help Arjuna to solve his problem. And what happened? Everything which a person wants in life was there with Arjuna. Great dexterity. But na chashayo anupashyami hatva sajan mahave na kangshe vijayam krishna na cha rajyam sukhani cha. I do not see how any good can come from killing my own kinsmen in this battle, nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent desire any subsequent victory, victory, victory or happiness. So then, finally, Arjuna gives five arguments. Arjuna gives five arguments why I cannot.
<clears throat> so Arjuna was confused and what are his arguments? See, we also feel confused and we give so many arguments. As I explaining, as I explaining, as I say, right? So first argument Arjuna was compassion. How can I kill my own relatives? Like I gave an example, if a general of Indian army goes to fight with Pakistan and sees that the general on the side of Pakistan army is a is who is his own relative. Anything I don't fight. But what will happen? Pakistani people will fight and kill this general, right? So same way was Arjuna. If he ran away from battlefield, the battle would have happened. And Arjuna would have gone in fame. So Krishna is refuting in second chapter. The second argument which, which Arjuna gives is loss of enjoyment. That if we kill our own relatives, how will we enjoy? Or if we die, what we will do? Then third argument Arjuna gives fear of sinful reactions. Are, by killing so many people will incur sinful reaction. Like a so like a like an Indian soldier on Ladakh thing. Or if I kill a Chinese, I will get sinful reactions. So like that, Arjuna was thinking. Of course, Arjuna also had a compassionate heart that so many people will be killed if I can save it. Then destruction of family traditions. So what will happen? The many people will die, wife will be alone, and they may not be very maintained purity. Children will be distracted. See, generally, who becomes loafers? Who become criminals? People who don't have family, who don't got good sanskar from their parents or their parents were not there. So destruction of family traditions will happen. And finally, he was indecisive. Kya karo? Ye karo ya? Wo karo. And Arjuna was confused. And finally, what did Arjuna do? Sanjay Bhavancha. Eva Mukta Arjuna Sankhe Rato Pasta Upavisha Visarjaye Sacharam Chapam Shoka Samveg Manasa. Sanjay said, Arjuna, having those spoken on the battlefield, cast aside his bow and arrows and sat down on the chariot, his mind overwhelming with grief. Right? So he kept it. See, battle is there, all to fight, and he kept his bow and arrows. The similar situation may happen to us even in our life. Where we are totally confused what to do in our lives. And there's a time we can learn lessons from Bhagavad Gita. So at this point of time, Arjuna took shelter of Krishna. And then Lord Krishna spoke the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. And then all doubts of Arjuna was finished. The same way in course of our life, there will be problems, there will be challenges. But if you apply this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, it will help us. And I just want to show you one nice thing. Let's see. One good video.
Okay. So you write on the chat that what lessons did you learn from this video? Please write in the chat box that what lessons you learned from this video. So many of you are giving nice answers. I'm happy to know that. So what you see, see when he was focusing the problem and killing those flies, the problem was multiplying. But when he stopped thinking of the problem and coolly thinking how to solve the problem, then automatically problem went away. So many times we increase our problem by thinking of the problem. So rather than thinking a solution to the problem, we keep thinking of the problem. Like somebody said something wrong to you. A lot of these things goes in the mind of a person. But let us think, okay, he told it. So like, what can I do now? So we keep thinking of past or we keep thinking of future. We forget to live in the present. And that's what Bhagavad Gita is teaching yoga. Connection to God. That we go away from all tensions, anxieties in our life. So many of you have given nice lessons, right? So when your mind focus on the Lord, even hell becomes heaven. So it's good. So we end the session and we have now our concluding slide. So Lord Krishna give this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to remove the stress of Arjuna. So summary, we saw fear of Dhritarashtra and diplomacy of Duryodhana, victory always on God's signs, signs of victory. The Lord serves his devotee. And then Arjuna sees his relatives. Arjuna got bewildered and he gave five reasons not to fight. And Arjuna is finally in grief. And what take home lessons? Understand five subjects of Bhagavad Gita to tackle any problem of your life. Jiva, Ishvara, Prakriti, Karma, Kala. Excessive attachment leads to fear. We have both divine and demonic tendencies. Our future depends on what we nurture. Lord always ready to serve his devotees, so always remember God. Solution to stress, develop positive in mind by knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. So thank you very much, all of you, for coming attending session.